What's up, you bunchy emos? It's rain. Today, I am back with another video, and I'm excited about this one because I've been talking about doing it for a long time, and I just haven't gotten my shit together enough to make it happen, but I finally did. So today, we're doing a DIY video. I'm gonna do a bunch of different DIY videos over time. But the first one I want to focus on is upcycling. So if you don't already know what upcycling is, it is essentially taking clothes you already own or clothes from the thrift store or any, any article of clothing and changing it and adding to it and removing from it. Basically taking clothes, you know, you're not reaching for, you're having a hard time styling them because there's just that one little thing that's off, you know, and you just aren't sure like how to make it better, you know. Every piece of clothing can be saved. You can always spruce it up a little bit and make it something that you know, like that you will reach for more. And so that is what we're gonna be talking about today. All of these DIYs should be relatively cheap and some of which can be mostly things that you will find at home already. Some things you will, you will have to go out and get. There's like one, or like a couple that I need like a little something here and there, but mostly I'm trying to get something that's that you can do at home yourself and you can really, you know, go crazy on your clothes and just make some really cool pieces. So the first DIY I wanted to talk about is, you guys have seen me wear these shirts multiple times, but basically creating, taking t-shirts that you own already and turning them into crop tops or really any shaped shirt that you would want. But specifically today, I will be talking about turning them into crop tops. So to start off, I just lay out my t-shirt that I want to upcycle. And then I find a shirt that I really like the shape of already. That's basically gonna be our base. We're gonna mimic this shirt. Put it on, put the, the shirt that you wanna copy on top of the t-shirt and position it where you want, like what parts of the t-shirt you wanna keep. As you can see, I had to redraw my line because I realized that I was cutting off a huge portion of the design and I was like, well, I don't have to do that if I don't have to. I do that, outline it with chalk. So when doing your outline, you wanna make sure that you're copying the correct pattern. Both sides of sh most shirts have a different pattern versus the front and the back. So I wanna copy that correct neckline at the front. As you can see, I did it wrong at first and then I corrected myself. And then you're gonna flip that shirt over and you're gonna then copy the back of the shirt. And then you cut those little pieces out. I would make sure to leave a little, maybe like, less than half an inch of space, like a quarter inch of space on the sides. This would normally be a seam allowance if you were sewing or something like that, because if you cut it right at that line, it's gonna be a little too small. So just leave a little bit of room on either side. As you can see, I wasn't cutting right at the line. And that's just to ensure that this piece isn't gonna shrink on your body. Then the easy part, once you have your little pieces cut out, you're just gonna put them together, line them up, and start safety pinning them together. And you just go up along the sides and put the little sleeve, the sleeves together. I guess they're not sleeves, the straps. And then voila, you have a brand new shirt that's super fun and it fits the way that you want it to wear, like want it to be. Because I personally, I don't wear t-shirts all that often. I am wearing a t-shirt today, but that's because this is my pajamas and I feel like changing. <laughs> so that is usually what I wear t-shirts for. I don't usually wear them with outfits unless they're like a cropped t-shirt, you know? It just, it gets you that desired fit and it's super easy. You can do this with anything. And I do this with many shirts that, and I, I just love it, it's great. Alrighty, this next one is kind of similar. This one will be a little more on the pricey side just because grommets and the, or eyelets or whatever they're called are a little on the expensive side. But if you get a pack of like a bunch of them, you can do this to so many different items of clothing and it's really cool. Basically, you need a pair of scissors or a seam ripper 
You're also going to need the grommets slash eyelets, whatever you call them, and a tool to... There's specific little tools that you need to make sure that the grommets go in correctly, um, a hammer, and a shirt that you want to mess up, and then maybe some string or ribbon or whatever. You also should probably get a ruler or a measuring tape of some kind. So the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out where you want your grommets to go. So I'm just going to put mine down the front of this little paisley top I have. It used to be a lot longer but I cropped it. <laughs> I've already messed with this shirt once. Um, and basically you're going to take a sharpie and go along the front and I like to put an inch between each grommet and I just basically measure out where I'm gonna want these eyelets to go, where I want my little silver hardware to go, and just go down the line, and once you have that marked out, we can start getting those babies in there. So next up, you're gonna take your seam ripper. This, I find, is the easiest thing to make these holes for the grommets because scissors you will accidentally make the hole too big a lot. So if you're going to use scissors, please be really, really careful because like really gentle because it's super easy to just rip that fabric and then your hole is too big and your grommet's not gonna fit. So basically I just poke my little seam ripper in there and I kind of finagle it around just so it loosens up that area and it makes the hole just big enough that I can fit that grommet in there. So what you wanna do is, so with these little eyelets, there are two sizes and you want to make sure that you have the correct ones. And so you have one that has like a longer middle part and one that's shorter. I'm gonna take the one that's longer and stick it downwards so the bottom is facing inside the shirt. So you don't wanna be able to see that when you're done. So you put it down into the hole and kind of, your hole should not be the same size as the grommet. It needs to be a little smaller. You want it to be snug. So you're gonna have to kind of shove it in there. <sighs> this sounds so weird. <laughs> Basically just put, it, stick it in there so it's like a little snug and it works. And then you're gonna put the one with a shorter mid middle part over the top. Then you're going to take your little grommet tools and place, there's a little black piece that is circular, it's got a little raised um, circle in the middle, so that grommet fits in there perfectly. And so you do that, take your little metal piece, put it on top, um, it'll have a piece to go inside the hole, and then you just hammer, hammer the ever living shit out of it, basically. you're just. And I, you should, you're gonna have to hammer it really hard because otherwise the grommet isn't going to bend and get stuck together the way that you need it to. So I would hit it like a good five times, like really well, and it should be fine after that. And then basically you just keep doing that over and over again until you're done. Once you're done, I like to just go over every single grommet one more time and just hammer it, give it one last whack just to make sure that they're all like in there. And then at the end, you just cut down the middle and separate them so it's, you know, cause that's the whole point, you want it to tie together. Take, I just took a spare shoelace that I found. And that's the cool thing. If you just happen to have a spare shoelace just hanging around, that that's just as good as ribbon or buying string or whatever. And you just lace that baby up and you got this cool little top. I wanted it to fit a little more snug, so I just tied it in the back. I think I might go and use my sewing machine and actually get it to fit right later. But for now, this is what we're going with. Yeah, so that's how you make that. Next up on this list of upcycles, we're going to take an old jacket and basically make it a crust jacket. If you don't know what a crust jacket is, it, usually people call them crust pants, like you do this with pants a lot, is that it's that classic punk pants with all the patches on them. So, or just, you know, there's a bunch of stuff all over the place. So we're kind of going to do that with a jacket instead. This is actually a really old jacket that I've had for a while. My boyfriend gave it to me 
when we first started dating because he never really wore it and I didn't have a good jacket and it's like I think he's had it since like eighth grade or something it's a very old jacket it's been through a lot it's seen a lot and I've decided to just completely destroy it because it was already kind of falling apart there were holes everywhere so it was the perfect candidate to turn into something else that I like could be really cool like a really cool unique piece so we're actually doing a bunch of different things to this jacket but the first one we're gonna do is I've seen a lot of people painting with bleach lately and that I think looks super cool and I've seen people specifically do this two black jackets so this is not original by any means but I thought it was cool and I just wanted to show you guys my version of it and how it went so basically all you need is some bleach like just regular old clothing bleach or whatever a paintbrush a little dish chalk again and then you're gonna need a reference image for whatever it is you want to paint so basically I just start off by sketching how I want the ribs to look on the front just to make sure I don't you know royally mess it up as I go and once you get that outline done you're just gonna pour your little bleach Please be careful, bleach, obviously, disclaimer, it is a chemical, it will burn you, and you don't want chemical burns, it's not fun. So, you know, wear gloves if you got them, or just, just be very careful. So, obviously, I put it in my little dish, and I just go ham, I just start painting. And, like, it's literally just like paint, and it will slowly, it was really fun watching it slowly lighten as it went, like, that was super cool. But basically, that's, it's that easy. You just and you could do this with anything, it doesn't even have to be ribs, you could paint a skull or rainbow, I don't know how you do it, I don't know, just something. And then I, I at the end I liked, I added some little splatters of bleach as well, I thought that was a cute little touch. And that's that, I feel like it turned out really cool, I'm, I'm excited about it. The next thing I did to this jacket is I added a bunch of patches to it. I really want to get more so the sleeves are just like covered, but for now this is what I had. So I did start with the back, and so this is another thing, when you have those shirts that we cut up earlier, if you have any pieces that you, like of the design that you had to cut off, and you, and it still looks kind of cool. So for example, this possessed banner I have was actually at the bottom of my Suicidal Tendencies t-shirt that you guys might have seen in some of my other videos or on my Instagram. And I've been keeping it for a long time because I knew I wanted to use it for something. And so I finally, finally got it. Um, I originally had, there's something called heat and bond that you can actually put onto any scrap of fabric and it will make it so you can um, just make it an iron on patch. So I've done that before. Unfortunately, I don't have any more. So I can't really show you how to use that as of right now. But basically, you, this is super easy. If you don't have an iron, you can just use a flat iron. It can kind of make your flat iron a little messy, so be prepared to like wipe it down after that um, so you can use it again on your hair. Please clean it after, <laughs> and I guess before and after. So I basically just ironed that down. I had these little stars. I thought it was cute that I had them, put them, arranged them, you know, where I want them to go and just iron them on. Then I also wanted to sew on patches. It is a lot better to sew them on because that really ensures that they stay on there. Most of the time, the heat and bond, what like those iron on patches don't last very long. So I highly recommend just patching, like sewing, hand sewing them on. Um, you just, you know, you take the needle and you know, you put the thread through, tie it up so it stays on and you'll do your first little go through with the needle, make sure you tie it off and you just keep going until it gets sewed on. If you run out of thread mid sewing, um, or if you're about to, do not keep sewing until the end of your thread, because that is annoying. You, like you will be, like it's a struggle to deal with. So once you reach like a good, like let's say about this much of thread left, I would tie it off cut it and then start a new thread and do it all over again. But usually I try to just do a really long thing of threads so I have enough and I don't have to do that. But yeah, so I also really like the way that they look when you sew them on. It's just a nice little touch and it gives it that DIY kind of vibe and just gives it some more character. The third thing we're gonna do to this jacket 
is like it's gotten really worn around the sleeves and so there are these holes on there i originally wanted to kind of do some like like sew them shut with like some red thread i thought that would be cool but then i decided i wanted to use safety pins because good old safety pins they're they're awesome for anything and they still they look cool so i just decided to safety pin those holes shut and it gave this really fun like look at the end i i just really vibing with how this jacket is going so far and last but not least i got this marker pen it's a fabric marker so it's like fabric paint and you can just draw right on it and i decided to do these fun little doodles on the back and i put poser at the top so it's hidden when i'm not wearing my hood so when the hood's down you can't see it <laughs> and then when i pull it up it's like poser i thought that was fun i don't know i just like that word i think it's a funny word people always be using it thrown around everywhere and so that's fun it's another thing you can really personalize clothes by doing this like you can just there's so many options and let's just go I just decided to just do some eyeballs and some, some pills I don't know it's just the the thing I was feeling at the moment so that's what it is and so this is my jacket thus far I definitely plan on adding more patches and doing some more stuff to it over time but for now i think i'm just gonna leave it like this and i cannot wait for it to get cooler so i could wear this because i used to wear this all the time and i eventually got to a point where i was like ah, oh, it's like but it's just like this old raggedy old black jacket so now i'm really excited that i finally i've been meaning to do this to this jacket for a really long time so i'm glad i finally got to it and super excited to wear it all right, last DIY of the day, last upcycle, is distressing jeans. So this one is super easy. All you need is a sharp object. I use my X-Acto knife, and you just need to cut some lines, um, like straight parallel lines across where you want the holes to be. And once you've done this, you take a pair of tweezers and you just start going to town on those on those threads. Just keep pulling until they start coming out and they start getting, you know, pulled out. And so between those parallel lines, those threads will completely come out. And then once you get to the edges of the, that, those lines you created, it, it'll be like they won't come out as easy. And so that's how you get those, those little strings everywhere. And then at the end, I like to kind of distress the edges of the lines that we cut in just to really finish it off. And you just take your tweezers and just pull at it. Just yank at those, at the edges of the thread and stuff and it'll give this cool frayed look. So yeah, that is basically, that's what I got today. I do plan on doing a couple more. I definitely think this will be a series. I'm gonna, cause I have a bunch of stuff that I wanna upcycle. So I think there will be a part two, part three, how many, uh, however many it takes for me to finish my, my long list of upcycles. So that is my list of upcycles. So I actually, I could take down some of those because I did it. Also, Halloween is coming up. It's already spooky season for me. So please leave what kind of Halloween content you guys want to see this season below, what kind of costumes, what kind of characters makeup or whatever whatever it is you guys want to see i want to know because i want to make it happen for you and don't forget to like comment and subscribe because it really does help my channel and i will see you guys next time also it's two weeks in a row baby i did it i finally posted two weeks in a row it's a thing i did it consistency i am consistent maybe we'll see we'll see next week but for now i did it all right, bye.